When I heard about what we were doing, it's like, yeah, we're doing this coast-to-coast -coast race called The Run. I was like, got it. No need to explain anymore. I, I just get it. Past Need for Speed games have typically taken place in a fictional city. So the run actually takes place in the US and it's a legal race from San Francisco to New York City and we've never ever had that before. So there's definitely an epic quality to the run. It's not a casual race, like I'll just take it easy. Every second counts. Audio really brings scenes to life. So you can have fantastic visuals, which we do, a fantastic art team, but then how do you bring that to life through sound? And so the feeling was really trying to nail the different geography that you're gonna be traveling through. So the desert, for example, is gonna sound different than the mountains, which is gonna sound different than a busy city. In terms of sound effects for the run, we had to make things a lot more human. And to do that, we had to add more sound effects. In the past, we haven't had characters getting out of a car and running, even the, the dialogue as well. You head around front, I'll cover the back. Got it. We actually bring the sound team into the design meetings at the beginning when we're trying to think about what objectives do we want to accomplish with these trailers. It's so important to make sure those trailers come to light. The source files that they have for actually creating the cars in-game and then uh, what we use in our, in our videos, it's, it's a big deal because really the cars are the stars of the show. It's pretty amazing to hear what they actually sound like. Each car is recorded on an average between 8 to uh, 12 mics just for onboard. And of course, you know, there's the exhaust. 95% of our effort goes into that last 10 to 20% of making it a believable experience. We have such great audio engineers and fantastic sounds that really capture the power and the, the feel of the cars. If you've got a, a computer that can process that, you're going to get the full experience. And if you've got substandard equipment, the experience is still going to be fun, but it's not going to quite be what it could. <laughs> In each of the main stops along the run, there's an epic blockbuster moment. The first big impact moment in Death From Above is you have this intense racing going on through the streets of Chicago, and then out of nowhere, you get T-boned by the mob. So bam, it's this metal on metal jarring experience that really sort of makes you stop and think, like, what, what the hell is going on here? And then his only course of action is to run up the stairs in the building. You've got these little beats of footsteps and uh, he's trying to jump this chasm from building to building and all of a sudden this helicopter looms up out of nowhere and you hear it and it starts shooting and it's like a, a holy crap moment. <laughs> base of the helicopter and then the sound of the bullets hitting the uh, the rooftops is, is pretty stark. And then, then the next experience is that he has to get a cop car to be able to get out of the city alive. He's got to secure that car and then the big action moment is when the chopper is firing on him. When you're driving that car and you first hear those bullets and hear those chopper blades whirring, it gets your heart rate pumping. Now, after you've eluded the helicopter, sort of, this gas tanker explodes in front of you. And then it's quiet. You know, there's small kind of orchestral sounds to set the tone, and then all of a sudden the camera zooms in and you hear this shrill train horn. It's, it's amazing to see consumers play that because at E3 that was the demo and it, it was like their eyes were like, oh my gosh, I gotta get out of this car now. You're freaked out, you know, feeling relatively helpless inside that car. If you've got uh, a great system and you've got a great sound system as well, then it just makes your gaming experience that much more enthralling and, and just rewarding.